Welcome everybody to the Town of Pound of Select Board meeting, um, October 24th at 6.05, sorry we're a little late. Um, call to order, board member roll call, Angie Rowling. Carl Strohmeyer. Jamie Percy. Mike. Mike, are you there? Uh, yeah, I am now, I just got unmuted, sorry. Okay. Okay, can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, of the United States of America, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mike, are you chairing or would you like me to chair? No, I can chair and I'm in there now. Okay, you all set? Yep, I'm good. All right, I'm take it over. Um, uh, approval of the agenda, public comment, approval of minutes, warrants, Bennington County Sheriff's Department mutual aid discussion, hometown heroes presentation, Williams College Consulting Group, ARPA discussion, town offices flagpole, um, laptop purchase discussion, possible action, town offices cleaning and maintenance discussion and possible action, VCRC mapping services at Estimate, dis uh, discussion, action, possible action. Public comment adjourned. We need to add BCRC request to use the space for Center Street residents open house and Ellen's treasury hours are attached. And we removed the hiring policy. That's why I skipped 13. Okay. Oh, okay. Do we have a date for the BCRC? Well, where are you putting it? Where are you putting the mic? Um, well, let's put it down on the other, 16A. Okay. <clears throat> Make a motion to accept the agenda with the changes. Second. All those in favor? Yeah, oh, sorry, hang on a second, guys. All those in favor, I have a motion to have a second. All those in favor? Oh. Do yeah. roll call. You have to do roll call because oh, um, I thought we did roll call. I mean, yeah, but you have when you vote, yeah, vote. Kind of vote because. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, that's right. We got to, we got to, uh, Carl Strohmeyer, aye. Angie Rowling, aye. Jamie Percy, aye. Mike Gardner, aye. Uh, motion carries. Uh, public comment. Any public comment, Hannah? Jim Tapasanga. Hello, people. Jim Kosas, North Mason Hill Road. Hey, I got that right this tonight. Um, first of all, I just want to repeat last uh, what I said last week that the discussion about the um, transfer station was just excellent. I mean, um, what was happening around town before any discussions were happening. Um, really made a little more sense. Um, and I, I appreciate now um, seeing on the agenda that tonight is going to be um, a little discussion with the Sheriff's Department. Um, I know there's um, been a, 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 a sour um, taste in someone's mouth about how much we're spending for the um, Sheriff's Department. And um, I just want to make sure that I mean, it's great to have these discussions before any um, illogical remarks are made or um, illogical decisions are made. And two of them that come into mind is um, um, someone saying that we're not going to I'm not going to spend one hundred thousand dollars on the sheriffs to patrol pound. So it kind of just put a bad taste in my mouth of uh, how much would someone spend? Um, it's not that person that's spending the money. It's the town that's spending the money. And um, basically, the hundred thousand is uh, a small amount on everyone's tax bill. Um, an example I gave with the transfer station that the um, the amount of eighty thousand that's not being paid or that's kind of off the balance of the um, revenues and expenses is only fifteen dollars on someone's tax bill that's living in a house valued at two hundred thousand. So, um, basically, um, the other remark was basically. Um, having to put the transfer station and the sheriff's department on a ballot article um, to see if it needs to be closed. I think these are 
remarks that don't need to be made in a rational, ir irrational way. And that um, t I want to quote a guy that a gentleman that up in Shaftesbury, when they're having a little episode up there about the school district, um, his one comment was, we need to have discussions before decisions. And I'm sure you guys have had a lot of discussions, but I think also some of these remarks that happen, um, we need to have a little more discussion before we make these illogical remarks. Um, the last thing I wanted to just say is that I, I really appreciate you guys doing what you're doing to try to hold down costs. Um, people are complaining about the taxes being too high. Um, you'll never, it's happening all around the whole state. Um, but the problem is that town taxes are really not that high. I mean, yes, they're up there, but depending on the value of your house um, that you purchased and expenses that you have to do, insurance and oil and heating and everything like that, compared to the tax bill that is by the town, um, I don't think it's bad. I mean, maybe there's a little few people that think they might be bad, but... Um, I guess the problem comes is everyone's looking at their tax bill and they're seeing the school district and the town, but they're not really seeing the school district and the town. They're just seeing a bottom line amount that they're paying. And so what I would, okay, what I'd like to see if you guys can between now and maybe next year, see if there's a way we can send out two tax bills, one tax bill that is uh, basically the school tax bill and one tax bill that is the town. And I think people would understand a little bit better what they're spending for each. Thank you very much, and thanks, Mike. Bye. Any more public comment, Hannah? Um, no other hands up. Thank you. Approval of minutes, uh, October 10th, 2024. So moved. Second. I have a motion, I have a second. Any discussion, any corrections, comments? All those in favor, roll call vote, please. Carl Strollmeyer, aye. Angie Rowling, aye. Jamie Percy, aye. Mike Gardner, aye. Warrants, counts payable on October 18th, $31,503.78. So moved. Second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Carl Strollmeyer, aye. Angie Rowling, aye. Jamie Percy, aye. Mike Gardner, I. Towns paid October 25th, $31,931.47. Second. Any questions, comments? Corrections? None. All those in favor? Carl Stolmeyer, I. Angie Lolly, I. Jamie Percy, I. Mike Gardner, I. Payroll October 18th, $11,670.37 or 36 cents. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Kyle Stolmeyer, aye. Angie Rowling, aye. Amy Percy, aye. Mike Gardner, aye. Payroll October 25th, $12,638.27. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor? Kyle Stolmeyer, aye. Angie Rowling, I. Jamie Percy, I. Mike Gardner, I. Oh, let's. Can we add Ellen's hours underneath this, Lawrence, please? Do you want me to read it? Yeah, I don't have it. It's my my packet's a little screwy because I I just you know because you're knocking off a bunch of paper <laughs> copies. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Actually, I got it in here. So okay, it was in order when you picked it up. Yep, yep, no, it, I'm, I'm just picking it up. Thank All you. All right. And I, <laughs> I apologize. I don't, I'm working off my own laptop, not my town one and whatever. So, no $30 worries. for 2024 patch selection. Okay. October 28th through the 30th, 8 to 3.30. October 31st, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. November 1st, 8 to 4 November 4th through November oh. 8th, 8 to 4. November 8th, taxes are due 8 to 5. Taxes must be paid by 5 p.m. October, uh, November 8th in person or online, or post by November 8th be considered on time. 
Any payments after 5 p.m. or postmarked after November 8th will be considered delinquent. If paying in cash, please have the correct change. Thank you, Alan from our treasurer. Mike, can I just ask the question to the public because you're coming across muffled here. We're having a really hard time hearing you. I just want to make sure the public can hear you. Wait, who, me? Yes. Yeah, I'm sure. Mike, you're too close. I'm doing your best, Mike. Uh, no, I know you're doing your best. <laughs> we, we appreciate that. Will you see if anybody can raise their hand if but he's this muffled? This will be posted within minutes also, correct, Eric? He's muffled. Yeah, you can't hear it. You can't hear it? It's, it's muffled. Okay. Okay, but anyways. Hi, right, sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Chairs to pay a mutual aid discussion. Do we have anybody in the same department? Yes, they are here. And the state police. You ready for them to take over? <laughs> you draw straws and see who goes first. Come on up. <laughs> Wherever you wherever you're comfortable. Yeah, right. There you go. I can stand. I'm I'm more ancillary than anything else here today to answer questions. Just be careful. If you do get up out of those chairs, they have a tendency of rolling away. So turn around, make sure they're behind you before you sit back down. Thank you very much, uh select board. Um, and people of Holland for allowing us to be here today to speak for you. Um, we are here to have the discussion um, regarding the mutual aid agreement that was established between the Bennington County Sheriff's Department, the town of Williamstown, um, Massachusetts. So what I will do is speak a little louder. What, I will, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to defer to my director of administration, uh, Director Vanowitz, because it was Peter um, who put all of this together. So he did a great job. And uh, here's Peter. Thank you. So these are very commonplace amongst law enforcement agencies, very commonplace fire departments, rescue squads, maybe even highway departments. I'm not really sure. Um, when I came on and started working for the sheriff, I saw that there was a need for agreement with the Williamstown Police Department to be available to help our people out in the event that the state police were all tied up in Dorset or something like that. It was not a reasonable response time. Our concern was for you know the citizens of Powell and of course our employees. Mm -hmm. So with the help of Chief Zimba. Um, we drafted this mutual uh, memo of understanding. It took us about a year to get it done, mm -hmm. but um, it, it's in place. Uh, by statute, we're allowed to do that. There's no added cost to the town of Palma. Um, you all have a copy of the uh, memo of understanding and the statute. So it's pretty cut and dry. If anybody has any questions, I'll try to address it. What are the hours? Well, so the hours of what? No, that's not. Yeah. I think this one is like so it's, it's so, an emergency basis, the way I understood it. So if you have a, if you have it's a, at midnight and the ambulance has a call and they need help, the sheriff's no, can't. No, if you have, if you have um, um, a, a critical incident, for an example, let's just say at the um, the Southern Vermont Medical Center Powell campus or stewards, or something where it's a, it, I mean, this is an, an above and beyond critical moment where um, we have one deputy, deputy legacy that may be in the town of Powell, um, and our closest backup would be the police and or other surrounding agencies, but it takes time to get there. Right across the border is Williamstown Police Department. So um, now this, this mutual aid agreement um, is there for an oh snap moment where we can work collaboratively together, but it's, it's not only Williamstown here, um, it's also us for there. So it's, this is a mutual agreement. So I understand that, but is it a 24 hour thing? Yes. Oh, hold on a minute. It's, it's, it's not for standing. It's a memo of understanding. 
The only people that can fall for mutual aid is the sheriff in this county and the chief of police in Williamstown. So if there was to be a significant incident, it would be up to the sheriff that would request mutual aid from Williamstown. Or if there was a significant incident in Williamstown, they could request right here the chief of police. Yes. Like I said, so there's there. no set hours or anything like that. This is if we need help and we need it quickly, right. we can get it. I mean, this is a this is a <clears throat> this is a fantastic uh, uh, design put in place by Director Banowitz and working with Chief Zemba and, and spending over a year's time and putting this together and working with their town governance and so forth. This is really impressive for the people of Powell. So um, it's 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 and it's also impressive for not only us, but to work collaboratively with the Vermont State Police, where we have those mutual partnerships. That's very important, and that didn't exist. So, Do you have an agreement with the Sheriff Department of State Police? Now, you can call for mutual aid to Williamstown. You're not on call. Uh, we've got a trooper down at Stewart's. How does that work? for the trooper to get a response from Williamstown. Well, does he do, do yes, Lieutenant. There you go. I guess that's the easiest way to. And I think the easiest way is, is if we frame this up into a critical incident, and, and I understand where we live, uh, it's a rural area, and you look at the news, and you have these critical incidents like natural disasters, or uh, you know, let's say an active shooter. And I know that's on everyone's forefront in, in our country today. That type of stuff can happen from me calling the chief and him sending resources or a chief sending resources. So, yes, I, I could call there and I would assume. You can call yeah. down there and get them to send a, one of their cop, one of their officers mm -hmm. across the line. Do you need to contact Sheriff Gully for Sheriff Gully to contact them? Because that's the way it's sounding to me. That's If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, Bob. No, this Go no, no, go ahead. This is this mutual aid agreement that Director Rabanowitz institutionalized is a relationship building event between the Sheriff's Department and Williamstown. Right. Correct. Where, where but if Lieutenant Koo were to need help, let's just say you have um, an active shooter at um, an establishment in the town of Powell, and we need to send um, law enforcement there in a, in a hurry in order to uh, stop the threat. Um, then phone calls will be made to whether it's by me or whether it's by Lieutenant Coot uh, to Williamstown Police Department to see if they can come and help. Can he call Williamstown PD? Sure. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. And request in the according, according to this, because I just, the way he explained it a minute ago, you were the only one that could request that support from the town of Williamstown. No, I, I think, I think where this, I think what was meant or correct me if I'm wrong, is that this is not for you to call Williamstown and have them come here. This is an agreement. This is a respectful conversation that we're having with you that I, this is not a permission granted by the select board for me to do this. This right. is my authority as the sheriff of the county to do this. So that's now, where this is going. The next question I'll have for you is, you're not patrolling. You get a request from Williamstown PD to help them down there. Will we be charged for that request? No. Okay. All I need to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you guys. It's all written in the agreement, sir. Right. But it's easier for me to, if you guys explain it to me rather than to try to go through all. So, of I mean, it's 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 no different if if we've got um if we've got an incident um in Bennington. Cool. Or North Bennington, mm -hmm. and and we have to send units. We we um, notify our dispatch. We let them know that we are stopping or canceling our time or our contract, yeah. and we are taking over. Now, when we do take over in a community, let's just say that we do not have a contract with, that's on our own dime. Okay. Well, good. Mike, do you have anything? No, no, I, I don't have anything at all, James. It sounds like um, it sounds like this is um, 
you know, something if, if your officers are in Pownal and need assistance, then you have an agreement in place to be able to call for that assistance. Um, it's pretty straightforward from, from what I gather here. Um, and uh, as far as the state police go, they're totally separate from if, if the VSP calls for um, assistance from Williamstown, that's VSP calling and not it's separate from your agreement with with Williamstown Police Department. Is that that's the only thing I have a question on? Yeah, right. State to state. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and we have other resources to include the New York State Police. I, I've worked in border towns all over our state and in times of crisis, you know, MOUs are nice, but in times of crisis, you know, commander to chief or incident commander to whoever we're requesting those resources for, that can happen on the phone. This is just the framework that allows us to have a better understanding as we move forward with that process, rather than it being willy nilly in the moment. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I sent troopers to New York State uh, early last year. Um, we, we have troopers in North Carolina right now during a natural disaster. Um, so these things are commonplace in law enforcement, fire, as Director Urbano had said earlier. So um, this is just more formalized what uh, the Sheriff's Department's worked on. No problem. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and please know, I mean, this is an opportunity for us to establish something that, that we, we, we didn't have uh, institutionalized uh, as a Sheriff's Department. And, you know, we're, we're, we're trying our best to collaborate, share our resources, but think, um, you know, uh, in a manner where if there is indeed a critical incident, um, we can um, properly address it, but also, um, you know, be safe doing so. Uh -huh. So, excellent. Thank you guys very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, hometown Heroes presentation, Tom. Is there anyone there? Yep. You guys are next. <laughs> You can stay and go. That's up. Hey, it's like you're sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bear with us. We're doing a screen share here. Are you doing this? Should we introduce ourselves? Sure. Yep. <laughs> Start deep. Hi, I'm Dee Colty, um, member of the board, the Green Mountain Hometown Heroes. Yep. I'm Shirley Adams. I'm secretary of the Green Mountain Hometown Heroes Committee. I'm Joe Bizon. I'm the uh, president of the VFW Writers and I'm a member of the uh, Green Mountain Hometown Heroes Board. Oh, and Shirley and I are members of the oh. Bennington Legion Riders. Give us a second. I think Hannah's uh, going back to kick the server a couple times. <laughs> the, the computer we're using for Zoom doesn't have PowerPoint, oh. so she's got to get her regular computer. Okay. Oh. Take her a second. We can talk if you want. It's up to you. We. I, I had just dropped Can't it on a, a... There we go. <laughs> So, the Mountain Hometown Heroes, we have five board members at this time. We're a collaboration of the Post 13 Legion Riders, VFW 1332 Legion Riders. We just had our first 37 banners installed in Bennington. If anyone has seen them, they're mm -hmm. beautiful. We are uh, incorporated with the Secre Secretary of State as of this year. And we have applied for our 501c3. Um, our purpose, the objective of the Green Mountain Hometown Heroes Corporation is to honor our local veterans living and deceased uh, by obtaining customized banners uh, to be displayed on poles along uh, the town managed streets. And we do have a banner. This is just a uh, demo banner. See, it's on both sides. Yep. Yep. You may recognize. I recognize them. Oh. <laughs> yes. That's it. 
Is that the size that you used in Bennington? This is yeah, one of the extra yeah. banners, yep. Yeah. Which you might notice is different than the ones you've seen in New York. New York, New York tends to be a little bit bigger. Yes, they're, they're pretty heavy duty. Yeah, they are. We've had questions about how durable they are, so. so yeah, that looks quite durable. Warranty for two years. So they are um, <coughs> warranted for two years by the manufacturer. So some of our guidelines are people who are eligible veterans, living or deceased, who are born or grew up, live in, and are associated would be with the town of Pono. Service members who have been honorably discharged from any branch of the U.S. military. Including much more than that? Yeah. So um, we do have an application process. Uh, there's a two-page application. Applicants would fill out. There is a fee. It's $190 uh, for a banner that includes the banner installation hardware and a small administrative fee. This is not a money-making operation for us. We, we try just to cover our costs. Uh -huh. There's no, no fee for the town. The town occurs no, yep. no payment whatsoever. Do you want Hannah to forward your slides? Uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead? So I don't even know what you're going on. Mike, you had a question? I do. Who, inc who incurs the $190 plus dollar fee? <laughs> Whoever chooses to sponsor the veteran, it could be a family member, it could be another organization. Um, whoever chooses to sponsor the veteran to be put on the banner. And how many banners does that cover the cost of just one banner? Correct. Okay. With the mounting hardware. Yep. Yep. Okay. Who takes, who takes care of mounting the banner and determines the location? We knew that was coming. That's what we've already done at Bacon. We ask the only that's the only thing we ask for the town to do is have the town crew mount the banners. But you also have to. Speak of Green Mountain Power. Yep. Right. In I'm fact, sure you guys <coughs> have done that before. Green Mountain Power. Talk to them about putting them up. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the Green Mountain Power, Power wanted the town to install them in Bennington. I'm assuming it would be the same here. So it's not really us making that decision. Okay. So basically, you're looking for permission from the town to move forward to contact Green Mountain Power and to allow you to put them on our town roads. Right. It's from the select. Yeah, they're going to be town roads. It can't be state. And then we can discuss. I come up with a couple ideas for different roads in the town. You want to be seen. I mean, I think, you know, the center street down through here is good. Down South Pond will be a good street down by the church, church street. And uh, what is the other street there by? Uh, is it uh, Main Street? Yeah. Main, main there by the churches down through that way. We can do Dean Road and North Powell. Yeah, that was that was one of the one of the, the tough ones is North Powell because there's not really a lot of paved or well used dirt or well used roads down there. So I'm thinking maybe even the back road down to 346 yeah. over here. That's that's a good road. I mean that's well traveled, so people can see them. And then uh, I also come up with uh, a North Powell Center Street or not sorry not Center Street but um, Barber's Pond Road up here. North Final Dean's Road. Dean Road, yeah. Yep. I mean, I would buy. There's not a lot in North Final. Dean Road. That's one of the, you know, yeah. paved traveled roads in North Final. That's not a state road. That is actually computer. You can't. I mean, if you guys are okay slides, with that, that's fine. Can choose with arrows. You can go to the next slide. Those are just details we can figure out later. Right, exactly. Well, we that's, those are just some suggestions that I had because I right. think, yeah. like I said, South Palm, Church Street Center, this one. Out here, which would, I think would be a great place for them because we're here with all the town, yep. um, all the way down through to the school. I would, yeah. How do you get the How do you get the word out so that people know they can apply for this as the board? So we do have. We just uh, created a Facebook page. We do have an email. None of us are have given out our personal. No, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. So, um, and, and it's been working really well. We have a P.O. box. Um, 
We would like to do um, most of our applications by email, and we do understand there are some people who do not use email or social media. So we are trying to come up with a way to deal with that. Is there a minimum amount or a maximum amount that you would accept? Like if somebody, say you only get two people that want to put up. You know, since we already have a relationship with the banner company, uh, if, if it were only two people, we'd go ahead and honor that. Right. Um, probably the maximum number is how many poles you all have in oh. on all that we can hang banners from. Because right. not every pole is, is if it, the pole has something else on it, Green Mountain Power wouldn't want us to use Correct. that pole. So. Yeah. It's been well received. I mean, yes. put it yeah. this way: we're loading up the, the polls, whatever polls we can get. We're asking for more. We asked for more yep. the other day in Bennington. Yeah. Um, so I think Powell has quite a few veterans. We don't realize, yeah. You know, so we should be able to fill up some roads. I think, and know? we'd hope to promote this through the the VFW and Legion yeah. groups here in Pondell as well. I mean, the riders well, the group VFW, reads yeah. with them, uh, rides with many of those folks, so we have contacts. And that's why I was trying to figure out something close to the Legion, too, to have these flags close to the Pound Legion, too. But the closest I could find would be that crossroad between um, where the old school was there. Um, what is it? Oak Hill. Oak Hill. There you go. Um, Oak Hill Road. Cro Oak Hill Road is another one, and the crossroad to it. Um, I guess that might be a little extension of Ladbrook. I don't know. Um, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. right. So those, you know, those, those, those roads are... And a lot of it would be nice if you put the banners of the veterans in the area that the veterans had lived in or living yeah, in. Yeah, we we had to Carl, we had to we had to kind of put a quash on that a little bit. I know right. because what especially with Benny, we had so many veterans at once. Yeah. They wanted to be put together. They wanted to be okay. It, was, it made it it made it a logistical uh, nightmare. Okay, yeah, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because you get a you get a you get a rush. Well, you know, next we're going to Reedsboro and North Bennington and Chasbury. Yeah. So we're going through all these. So I, I figured Paul would want to, would want in on this because I think they're really cool. I myself, you know. And there is a, um, an instruction sheet that goes with the application that explains. It gives our email address, our PO box, where they would mail their digital photos to. Will you be able to um, get the application from your Facebook page? I don't have that uploaded yet. Yes. Okay. I am working it will on be. it. It will be. Yeah. I'm working on it. Emails on there, send it around. That's, a, that's one that I was going to do for my phone. Actually, I have an extra copy of some of them. Keep one, too. Yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. 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 It's got the email right on it. Carl, I didn't okay. Would you mind if you've got a blank one, Tara? I'm going to ask. Could we take a scan of that, or what? However, we want to do it mm -hmm. and post it on our, our website. Yeah, and I was, I was going to say I'll keep hard copies here in case people want to come in. I can help them no. fill it out and submit. That actually goes back through email to you guys. So you guys keep we'll back to you. No, no, that one's not a blank one. That's oh, that's got the number. Of, uh, oh, it's just oh got so here's a here's a here's a blank one. Uh, well, I think we have one. I mean, I can make lots of classes. So what we're trying to um, not have to do up until last week, we, Shirley and I are running around to the VFW, to the American Legion, to the PO box, uh, trying to meet with people, um, especially people who don't have email addresses, because we will not order a banner unless the, the sponsor can confirm Yep, this information is correct, and that picture is the right picture. So, so that's they send in the difficult. information, and then we turn around, and, and then we confirm that it's up, because, Lord, we don't want a... <laughs> no, you don't want a problem. <clears throat> so I met with the veteran this afternoon at the VFW. I didn't have the correct picture with me because I, went, <laughs> I was given an incorrect picture. I followed him home to his house and went in and took a picture for his banner for him. He has no email address. So we, we, we we're try trying to help. to help them. We, we want to honor them. They, yeah. they just they they deserve it. They yeah. absolutely. We can send all the information in the email mm -hmm. and then the check to pay for it. 
to be sent to the PO box? Is that how you want to know? Yep. Yeah. And that's right on, it should be on the instruction sheet, our PO box. Once you set up your 501. Right. Seat, so basically, basically what you're looking for is you're looking for the town panel's blessing to go ahead and move forward with this, with this thing, right, Joe? Contact, contact, yes, contact Green Mountain Power. Say we, we want to do something. Bennington did. Mountain, come out the poles. Make sure you get the permission. And everything for whatever poles we're talking about. You guys confirm those roads that we're talking about. I think that's pretty easy. Everybody kind of agrees with that. What roads there? Um, and then contact Green Mountain Power, and then have your road crew to put them up. I mean, that's basically what it is. So we contact the yeah. electric company. Uh, yeah, yes. you, guys, you guys, well, whoever your yeah. okay. road crew person is, or whatever, that might be easier for your road crew guy. They won't talk to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and we try to and get then permission, to permission for you guys to, uh, to uh, have your road crew guys mount. Okay, sounds great to me. Yeah. It becomes an what's issue on getting board, the What's the board pleasure? Permission. Um... I make a motion that uh, we move forward with with the hometown hero program. I'll second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Uh, oh, Carl Strohmeyer, aye. AG Rowling, aye. Jamie Percy, aye. Mike Gardner, aye. So we'll move forward with that, Joe, and I apologize. I, I don't remember anyone else's name. And um, we can't we'll, we'll move forward with this then. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Thank, thank, you. thank you. So, just just kind of an administrative thing. The contact would be Sarah. Sarah. Okay, and I'll I'll email you tomorrow. Great. She has her email. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you all want to leave? They're going home to eat. Either way you want, it's fine. Either way. Either way. Thanks. Have a good night, Take care. Thank you very much. No problem. I'm going to take a problem. All right. Williams, Williams College Consulting Group. Thank you for coming. No. Okay. There we go. There. There you go. <laughs> uh, the College uh, <laughs> Consulting Group discussion. What's that? We're just everybody's leaving, Mike. No. Yep. I can see that. The Williams College. No, no. You. We don't want you to leave. No. 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 Everybody else here has left. Okay. All right. We're good now, Mike. Go ahead. William College, a consulting group discussion and possible action. So okay, um, not a lot to discuss. Um, Scott Grimlines from BCRC came across a consultation group. They provide free consultation from, um, they're out of Williams College. They're business students uh, from Williams College, and it's a free service. I have not looked into it at all. I just wanted your blessing to look into it for the transfer station. And that is, that, okay, yes. They do like municipal studies, um, feasibility studies, that kind of stuff. Consult I could I make an ask and make that talk, to, but, but I also would like to know if they could provide us any other type of service, such as uh, um, I have just been discussing about, I have, I have, I have an issues with we're going to have manpower issues coming down the road, and I and I don't know if they might be ones to help us do. I don't know if a study to study us to see if there's any place that we can improve. Uh, because think about it: how many people on the road department are within five years of retirement? I believe that's what she said. The feasibility study for the transfer station. Yes, but I, my thought was was. See what they are. Do it for the transfer station, but ask if there's anything else that we can do. Okay. Rod, that's all. Rod in the scope. Rod in the scope. That's all. The rest of the town. Okay. I'm all for checking it out and looking into it and seeing what they can offer. And I'll come out. back before I. Yeah, yeah. Before we commit to any. I'm sorry. Well, back what it is exactly. Yeah, because they're probably going to 
bring in and ask if this is, that they'll have some suggestions of the scope that we want. And I also don't yeah. know if it's um, a certain time of year or a certain semester that they dedicate to this stuff or if it's yeah. all year round or I don't know any of the details. Just was looking for, for basically your blessing before I move ahead. I think we should look into it, Terry, and see where it goes. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, ARPA discussion updates and possible allocations. So we all had my updates, um, what was already allocated and what is remaining. We have $129,823.48 remaining to be allocated. I, of course, had my suggestions based on talking to Joel and a few other things. Um, the main request I have is that we purchase a side-by-side -side for emergency services. Currently, our volunteer services use their personal vehicles, and if something happens, they're out there side by side that they've paid a lot of money for, and I don't think that's right. I'm also concerned because we have new access to a large forest area. Um, we're going to have more hikers and more access to this very big piece of land, and getting up there is not going to be easy if there's an emergency, and we're talking all kinds of emergencies from someone being hurt to fires um, and the 50,000 that I'm requesting. I've worked with Craig to come up with quotes and that will purchase the side by side as well as equip it for fire and rescue. And it will be available to both fire departments as well as the rescue department. So it also said trailer and equipment in your, um Right, put the new, new store it'll in the trailer and then the gear is actually a insert that goes out of the back in place of like the standard bed mm -hmm. and it has some uh, pumps like meridian tanks and then a stove area for carrying well, I think uh, Jamie, I think I think we're jumping to conclusions on what what it's gonna have equipped, right? Well uh, no, I'm just giving her an I'm idea of what they're that's doing. That's what's that's what's in general. So I think right. before, before we allocate any money to to a side by side, and I'm not opposed to it, I think it's a great idea. I do think we need to to look into what it has for equipment on it. And Correct. there's a whole bunch of things that go along with this, right? Where is it going to be stored? Who's going to be in charge of maintenance? Is the town going to be responsible for maintenance or or uh, the rescue squad or the fire department? So where's all that going to come from? Um, I think before we allocate the money for that, there's, there's a few things which just need to be ironed out before we move forward, right? Is it, oh, gonna, is it gonna have is it gonna have rescue equipment? Is it gonna have uh, rescue equipment and fire fighting equipment? Is it gonna be <laughs> where is where is the where is the trailer gonna be housed? Yeah. Is it gonna be housed at the town office or the town garage or whatever? So I think there's <laughs> I think there's a few things we it's, need to look into. I, it will be stored at the um where Craig would have access to it. Craig is the emergency manager, emergency management coordinator would decide where it will best be stored and how everyone can access it. He would also help me decide what equipment goes on it. That is not up for us to decide. Uh, sure. I did have one other question though. Why a side-by-side -side and not a four-wheeler? Uh, because side-by-side -side can carry more people as well as, well as, as equipment. equipment. Okay. Yeah. And it can bring a patient out. Okay. So Craig is doing this on his I shouldn't say authority, but his position as emergency coordinator for the town of Palma. This isn't coming from the fire department. It's coming from the emergency coordinator for the town of Palma. Mm -hmm. And me, because we've added a Correct. risk to the town. Um, as far as storing it, it would be stored there, but I do need to check on insurance um, because I don't know if the town, if the town owns it and we insure it, I'm not sure our insurance carrier will let us store it there and have it used for fire. So it may need to go on one of their policies, but that... That's I, something that has to yeah, I can look into um, over the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to look into that a little bit more, Terry, and bring that back to our next regular meeting. Yeah. Just, to, just to iron everything all out here. I just think there's a few things we just need to iron out. Okay. But Good enough. That's what's going to happen, Mike. Is that okay. just insurance you want me to iron out, or what else do you want me to... Well, so, so we need to figure out the insurance, right? We need to figure that out. 
we need to figure out who's going to maintain it. If it's a town owned machine, um, the, you know, it's not, it's not a fire department owned machine, right? It's a town owned machine. So who's going to be doing the maintenance on it? Because, um, you know, and Craig, God forbid, Craig's not the emergency management coordinator anymore, you know, next year. And the emergency management coordinator is, it's somebody totally, you know what I mean? It's, it's this whole, there's a, there's a few things I think we just need to iron out um, before we just say, okay, we're going to spend 50 grand here on this and be done with it. Okay. And I can, I can get with you. I should be a little more mobile next week. Um, right, now, right now I'm not very mobile. I, I think I can. I think I can handle the insurance calls and whatever. Right. And we just, you know, we just need to know who's. We just need to iron out who's in charge of maintenance and, um, you know, uh, all of, you know, because if the town owns it, like I said, are we responsible for the maintenance, or is is the rescue squad in charge of maintenance, or the fire department mm -hmm. in charge of maintenance? Who's who will be in charge of maintaining? If it's a and and I'm I, I'm totally for this. I just think we need to iron out. Um, I think we need to iron out a few things just to make sure we do it the right way. Okay. All right. Um, what do we think about the other suggested uses? The, I don't think the public really knows what we're looking at. So, the other ideas were parking lot paving. And that's behind here. The back parking lot and the roadway out. That was my other question. Emergency, was emergency road. out here. And that that pricing I got from Joel. Right. Um, and then the staircasing is just like a generalized amount because I know that you all were interested in having stairs put in. From the just so people understand that are out there from the road down the bank to the town office. Yes. For when they park up there, that they can walk down the stairs. So when we have the back ramps done, Hannah's gonna see if they have the capability of doing that or if we have to get it engineer designed, um, which could affect the cost, obviously. Uh, but this can just be an initial discussion and we can come back with-, um, with Yeah, let's go back on that. Um, ooh, the, camp, the compactor for the transfer station. I, know. Um, he, I wanna he, talk about that for a minute. Um, Joel and I went down to uh, Williamstown. We were invited down um, by the town of Williamstown to look at their transfer station and and things that they run um, and how how they run their their transfer station. And we've been talking about trying to um, make our transfer station run more efficiently. They just installed <clears throat> um, refurbished compactor down there for around thirteen thousand dollars. Um, and I, I think it's a huge, I think it's an opportunity for us to, um, I think it's an opportunity for the select board right now to work on making this transfer station much more efficient. They saved, um, they saved approximately $9,600, um, on their first year with that with that compactor because they're paying the same as us. They pay a hauling fee every time someone backs into a dumpster, whether that dumpster takes out one ton or nine tons. With the compactor, they're taking out, out of the cardboard and paper alone, they're taking out an average of nine ton versus versus a ton or a ton and a half every, every time. Um, my idea, and I think this is where, where the consulting firm, I guess, would maybe come in. I don't even know if we need them to do this. We could probably do it on our own. Kyle's been working on this. I, I noticed some of the emails, Kyle, with um, asking Tom back and forth. My ideas are we, we get a compactor for our cardboard and our paper products. We get a compactor for our plastic and glass. We separate out our tin cans. They go into the metal. Um, this is basically what Williamstown is doing. Then we can put our demolition debris under cover in our tipping shed so that we're not paying for water weight on insulation and and sheetrock and whatever else. It's it's under cover. We're not we're not paying for water weight because we pay by the ton. Um and call jumping anytime. We're paying by the ton for um 
getting rid of getting rid of our construction debris. Correct. As of right now, my calculations, the numbers I got from Tom for our construction debris is yep. our construction debris is a net positive on. Yep. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I saw that. Yep. Our, net, our construction debris is a net positive um, going in and coming out. Uh, the trash, I had to do some calculations because Tom can't get me the September figures. This is only for the month of September. Right. Because that's the, that's the, uh, uh, but my figures say that uh, the trash may end up being, the trash may be end up being barely a net positive, but uh, where we lose the money is on our recyclables, and that is on the transportation side, because you figure if we're shipping out one ton of recyclables per load at $212, um, if you times that by eight, that will be the savings for um, one of our um, classes of recyclables. So, I, I mean, I'd like to see personally. I'd like to see two compactors come in, um, put them on a cement pad, and and redo our transfer station. I've got some ideas, but I think it's um, it needs it needs sort of a. Why don't we go with three? Well. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the, the bottom line is, Mike, if we've got three things I'm that we're dumping garbage, we're still going to end up, all right, I believe, unless you're figuring that we, the cans will generate money from the metal perspective. I think well, I don't know if it's going to generate any money, Carl, but it won't cost us to get rid of them, right? But I think we should look into another uh, option as far as recycling the tin and the metal anyways. I've been doing a little more on that. I just haven't narrowed down all the numbers, but okay. definitely better than what um, we're presently getting. Maybe we should bring this back to the next regular to the yeah. transfer station some more. Because yeah. I was going to suggest that we put 20000 uh towards a compactor, and then Tom has equipment fund money, so he may have enough to do one or two or three or I don't know, but maybe involving him and the conversation and he should definitely be involved and, and, and have more of a Mike. Did that. Tom go with you down to yeah, Williamstown? Yeah, Tom, Tom was there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because okay. I just heard you say Joel, and I was a little yeah, worried. Sorry. No, Tom. Tom was invited as well. I I made sure Tom was invited. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Did you get it? Did you get from them down there what the cost was? Um, Their cost for the compactor. It was, it was thirteen thousand, but it was used. It was a used refurbished compactor. It was thirteen thousand dollars. And is that compactor and container? They use Casella right now. Casella. Oh, okay. Containers. Gotcha. Casella supplies the container. So okay. They the, there's no cost for a container. Okay. So it's a standard drop and. Pickup fees, as far as that goes. Standard like we're paying right now. Yes. I guess that's a question to confirm. Okay. And then, so I put 20000 towards highway because Joel didn't get a lot of the ARPA money, and he will have 80000 to pay off on the truck this year, um, and then the rest towards the cemetery fund. But I can bring it all back. Which I, is just Sarah, I, I really like the way you have it broke down here. Um, I, I, you know, I, I think it's great. I, you know, I, I don't have a problem with the 50,000. I just think we need to iron out a few things rather than yeah. have it here and then try to iron out um, yeah. the compactor, all of that stuff, I think is, you know, and I think you're right. I, I, I This is a discussion. I think we need to bring the transfer station portion of it back at the next regular board meeting. Um, bring Tom in. Um, and and move forward with this transfer station to try to save um, to try to save money. Williamstown used um, um, eighty percent of their budget last fiscal year. They didn't use one hundred percent of their budget. So, um, not that not that I'm trying to be like Williamstown. That's not it at all. I'm just trying to be more efficient with what we're doing 
And I think that's, I think this is a way, Carl and I have discussed this a little tiny bit. I think this is a way to, um, I think it's a way to, to bring it into, bring it into uh, a little better balance. I, I think uh, it's not about being like anybody else. It's about, like you say, upgrading our facility. And by visiting other facilities, we're, we get to learn what's working, what's not working. Right. So, I mean, that's the, it's good information. Mike? Yes, sir. In that discussion that we have for the transfer station, I'd like to have a discussion amongst us, the board members, on exactly how we want Tom to give us a monthly report on the comings and going, or not the comings, basically what he's got coming in and what's going out. I'd like that on a monthly basis. I don't believe there's any reason why he shouldn't be giving us exactly what we're generating per class of material and what it's costing us to ship that material out. I think and that's, I I think that's and, totally fair. And that's I think that, that I think the we as a board need to have a discussion on that yep. and then inform Tom exactly what we're requesting of him. Well, we'll put that on next um, regular meeting, Tara. Yep. Please. Perfect. Is that all right, Carl? Next, well, you know. That's perfect. I'm okay with that as long as we just move forward with that because right. I don't think that we're getting reports that we can, that are actionable reports to work with. No, I think it could be a little more timely. So, anything, else, anything else on the ARPA discussion? I think we're in good shape. Well, I think we did ARPA and trash at the same time. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll bring it back and. Those are just, just food for thought on the yep. on the suggested uses for the rest or allocations, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, no, I think and I think they're great. I I, I think they're I think they need just a little bit more discussion. And you know I don't like to do that, but I think they just need a little bit more and, yeah. and then, you know move forward. But I think it's I think it's great. Anything else on our discussion? Nope. Nope. Power office flag pool discussion and possible action. Everybody got the bids for that? Yep. There was two bids. Four thousand and thirty six sixty. And then there's I actually got a third one today for four thousand for a twenty five foot. And I have the money um in the town office ARPA allocated. I prefer thirty foot. You prefer thirty? I prefer thirty. I I'd prefer a hundred if we could do it, but I'm just because I'm I'm that kind of guy. Okay. And the garrison flag's real expensive, and we need two of them. I know, I know. It would become ex overly expensive. If you, but I'd rather have a 30 foot pole. Oh, I'm saying for 100. <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of garish. I know. <laughs> anybody anybody have any preference other than Carl on, uh, on the height? A standard is what, 25, right? Basic. They're, oh, God, they're all, what, they're all over the place. What's the size of height do we know? I think I it's 25. Do you really believe it's 30? Yeah. Know. So the thirty was forty three hundred, and what was the what was the twenty five? Thirty six six oh nine or four thousand. So six hundred dollars more for. Yeah, yeah, about sixty four hundred bucks more for a thirty foot versus a twenty five. Did that happen to include a lighting cat? Um, I don't believe it does, but I think we can purchase um. That there's solar powered ones that you attach to the top. Um, I was going to suggest we do that, anyways, if it's not included. And I'm not wed to the 30 foot if everybody else wants a 25. Well, you're planning on putting it out here. Mm -hmm. And for the between the tree and the building, well, I'm between the building height, the church heights, it'd be a nice contrast. Yeah. The 30. I want to take a motion for a 30 foot flagpole installed from uh, flagpoles, etc. So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Kyle uh, Stolmeyer, aye. Angie Rowling, aye. Jamie Percy, aye. Mike Gardner, aye. And I, I voted out of all. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Yep. All right. So we'll get that order up there. We're good to go. Yeah, thank you. Uh, laptop purchase discussion and possible action. So I basically just need your blessing to order two new laptops. Hannah started to act up and mine does here and there. So 
Um, if they crap out on us, we have no backup. No backup. So my question is, it's 24, 70, 84 for both, correct? Yes. And how long do you think they will last? It's like, these ones are old. These are like six years. Okay. We use them. The suggested lines are like three to five years. Three to five we use years. them past that. Okay. That was my only question. Can you question. get any credit for the ones you had? No, so he said to just keep them around. Or can we possibly get them upgraded or spares? We could, yeah, I mean, we could have them do a. You're going to continue using yours, right? Yeah. And I think I'm going to continue using mine as well because mine acts up and it won't, the mouse pad won't work. But then that's what happened. That was working again. Happen. So, it, like, it, it's good to have them just in case. Our, because sometimes it, we only have laptops. And the turnaround on these can be weeks mm -hmm. because I have to get approval from you guys and then order them and then sometimes. So, I'd rather just have them. Oh, I you should definitely have a backup. We yeah. haven't ordered computers. I mean, we well, ordered one for Joel. Year before last, so it's just only shortly after we moved in here. Whether whether those are your backup or whether the new ones are your backup, it doesn't matter. You're going to have the IT people sync the yeah. So everything that's on your computer will be on the new computer. Yeah. So yep. I, I want to take a motion to purchase two new laptops for Hannah and Tara. I'll second that, uh, or I'll make the motion. Make. Can I amend the mo have a motion of well, sorry blah, 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 blah. A motion amended that we purchase the two new laptops and then have these two laptops refurbished or upgraded at some point at some point I, yeah I don't think that has to be in the motion because it's just our IT people to we'll just go with it. okay I didn't know yeah, it's not sent easy. out for it that's all no. but, too cheap. <laughs> Well, I'm mentioning on the floor if you purchase two new laptops at $2,470. Do I have a second? Yes. All those in favor? Carl Strohmeyer, aye. Angie Rowling, aye. Jamie Percy, aye. Mike Gardner, aye. Okay. Uh, town office cleaning and maintenance discussion and possible action. <laughs> <clears throat> so now that Bill isn't here, I kind of had to divvy up his duties. Hannah's taken on some of the safety, building safety checklist stuff, uh, fire extinguishers, AED. Um, we obviously need a contract cleaner um, for a large portion of what he was doing. Um, so I did it under a contract format because it's just easier. And then uh -huh. this can be given to different companies that we call for estimates. If you give me the blessing to go for estimates, rather go for an other than go for an RFP. Yeah, I'd rather have estimates because we could. If, if, if none of the estimates work, then we can go with the bidding process. Right, we can do something else. But um, you know, I'll call three to five. I'll get three to five estimates and then go from there. But in the meantime, obviously, we need cleaning, and Ellen has been cleaning. Um, so I was hoping that you would approve me just paying her twenty dollars an hour for a couple hours a week that she does that. Otherwise, <laughs> our bathrooms are going to be dirty and floors unswept. I mean, she's been doing it already, so I just feel like she should be paid for it because it's not really her job. Well, yeah, you should be compensated for doing the job. Uh, that, right. And it won't affect her muni or anything like that. It's just a temporary fill-in for a few weeks until we can get a company in here. So what did you pick up? You said that you picked up some of the bills, too. No, I gave them to Hannah. Oh, you gave them all the <laughs> <laughs> I, That was one of my questions, and what you had to pick up. No, I didn't. Um, and then we're going to call a company. We're going to contract out, like, the filter changes um, on the furnace downstairs and the water filters. Um, and then anything that we need, like, maintenance-wise, we'll have to probably contract out if not oh. else can do it. For your filters, you want to include your HVAC because those have filters in them also. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if it's easy enough to do, I don't mind changing the filters when Fortune State comes if they can show me how to right. do it. Because Bill was, Tara was ordering them and then Bill was doing it. I can show you how to do it. Okay. Yeah. Not a big I, yeah. I, I also, Tara, want to know if we, if this adds um, to Hannah's what she's doing now, should we increase her, you know, if we're if Ellen's cleaning the toilets and picking up the pieces, and Hannah's picking up the pieces, let's pay Hannah a portion too. Uh, 
I don't know if it really is adding to Hannah's judge. She can do it while she's here. It's a little bit different. I mean, do you feel like you want to be paid more for her? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you would do that unless you're talking about increasing her hourly pay. Oh, because she's, she's a paid like employee on an hour. She's how would you turn around and do that from, would you give her, would you just add an hour to her work day? Uh, how would you do that, Mike? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, she's, I don't think she has to check the fire extinguishers every day. She's right? not. No, that's no. She doesn't even have to check them. She just has to contact the company to come right. and do. Right. So, and that's back once a year, every six years, right. every six months. Oh. Which she was actually doing anyways when Bill was here. Oh, okay. All right. I just, I just. Because, like, Bill would go to her. Of course. Right. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Golden ticket. What's, Golden. The, what's the board's pleasure for Ellen? Do you want to do a maximum yeah, hour, no, of hours, or how do you want know to? approximately how many hours it takes her to do? It's probably like, um, I mean, it, it is a big place, but so many a couple so hours many. a week. She only does the bathrooms. Just go downstairs too and do that. I mean, he will if we ask her to. Yeah, but is that what Bill was doing? He was doing downstairs too. Yeah, so that, she has to do what Bill does. So, so two hours a week, do you think? That's what I. That's. Yeah, that's probably enough. And it, we have the um, we have Bill's salary, so we can come out of that line. Okay. I make a motion that we pay Ellen for two hours a week for cleaning the facility on a temporary basis until we can find a Contract. contracted service. Okay. Correct. <clears throat> are you paying her a pay rate of twenty dollars an hour, as Sarah suggested? Yeah, that's my suggestion. Twenty dollars an hour. Two hours a week. Yes. Okay. I have a motion on the floor in a second for two hours a week, twenty dollars an hour for Ellen for cleaning. Uh, yeah. Only thing I would say is is if it ends up being takes to her three hours. Then she needs to come to Tara and That's exactly her. all. That's all I wanted to get out of everybody. Okay. Right. So, yeah, she can bring it back. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I'll, Charles Stolmeyer, I. Angie Rowling, I. Jamie Percy, I. Mike Gardner, I. Uh, BCRC mapping service estimate discussion and action, possible action. Okay, so for the forest land, um, we have lots of moving pieces, so to speak. Lots of people collecting inventory and public outreach and lots of um, sort of research being done on the land and um, different, you know, historical markers are found or streamways or elevation or all these different pieces. And we have like 50 different maps that have all these pieces on it. BCRC is going to help us figure out how to use their mapping system to make a layered map. Um, GIS data that has every single piece of inventory that we're collecting. Um, it will include trails, it will include um, forest tree stands, it will include, I mean, anything you can think of we're going to put into this map. And it's the same mapping system that Tessa McGann uses, who is our county forester. Um, so this is a real collaboration between all of our um, entities. And, the, and that data will be put on there too? Yes. So all of that data, any of the data that we are collecting will be okay. included in this map. And it will be reimbursed by VORIC, the VORIC grant, because okay. it will produce the maps that we said yeah. we were going to. Um, so she gave us a quote of 2500 not to exceed 2500 which is great. I mean, she's already come down and met with me and Nate about it um, and really sort of t took a jump on it already without the approval, just to say, like, this is what we can offer, the scope of service um, as part of their continuum of care. So... Um, I'm excited to get started with it, so hopefully you guys need a blessing or a motion. A motion would be great. Make a motion to board the BCRC's mapping not to exceed twenty five hundred dollars. I'll second that motion. I have a motion, I have a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Charles Stolmeyer, aye. Sorry. Angie Rowling, aye. Freaking hate me, Percy, aye. Mike Gardner, aye. 
Uh, BCRC requests to use the space for Center Street residents. Open house. Um, Hannah, what was that date again? So it's November 19th. Um, they're going to be here for the planning meeting at 6 p.m. to go over the results of their um, MPG study, which is for Center Street improvements that they've been working on. They just want to do like an open house reception kind of for the um, Center Street residents because um, they're the ones directly affected. So they just want to open up the space so that they can go over the results with them before the meeting. Um, so it'll be like now when I will be here, I can open the building for them. You're saying November or December? November 19th. That will be at 5 p.m. and then the planning meeting is at 6 p.m. Thank you. What's your pleasure? Uh, I make a motion that we approve the request from BCRC to utilize the town space. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Carl Schomeyer, aye. Angie Rowling, aye. Jamie Percy, aye. Mike Gardner, aye. Um, let's lead just into public comment. We have any public comment, Hannah? No hands up. No hands up. No. Nope. Uh, the motion to adjourn. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carl Stromeyer, aye. Angie Rowling, aye. Jamie Percy, aye. Mike Gardner, aye. And I'll be there in person next time, I'm sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank, thank you, everyone, for attending tonight. Hey, Thank no problem. You. All right, take care.